In this Comet vs. Chrome video, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison between Google Chrome and Perplexity's AI browser Comet. If you haven't downloaded Comet yet, simply click on the special invite link in the description to download it. Also, if you are a student, you can get Perplexity Pro absolutely for free. Just make sure you're logged out of any personal account on Perplexity's website first. Then, click on the special invite link in the description, enter your college email on the sign-up page, and then verify your student status. I've created a detailed tutorial that explains each step, which you'll find linked in the description as well. Let's start by looking at the interface of both browsers, and you can see this directly from their home pages. On Comet, the home page feels super minimal with a dark theme by default. You get a prominent search or address bar right at the top, and below that, there's a set of smart widgets. These let you quickly access AI tools, see your local time and weather, or even get livestock updates. There's also an immediate way to interact with the AI assistant, either by typing, clicking icons, or using voice input. Everything is laid out to keep distractions away and make room for what matters most, your main tasks and information. On Chrome, the homepage sticks to the classic Google approach with a simple, centered search box. You get a super clean layout with a few additional buttons like voice search and lately an AI mode toggle for Gemini if it's enabled for you. There's a row of Google app shortcuts in the top right corner, and everything is focused on search first, not widgets or quick access tools. This setup will feel very familiar if you'd used Chrome for years. It's about getting you to search in Google's ecosystem as smoothly as possible. Next, extensions. Both browsers support Chrome extensions, so you won't face any trouble finding your favorite tools or add-ons. The process of installing them is very similar on both, so there's really no learning curve here. If you have a workflow with certain plugins, you can keep that going whether you switch or not. Now let's talk about what happens when you search for something. In Chrome, your default is Google Search. And recently, you'll notice Gemini AI popping up at the top, offering quick answers for some queries. Then you get the usual list of websites. In Comet, the approach is a little different. You'll see direct website results first, usually with more focus on summaries and references, and then you get AI-powered summaries at the bottom or on the side, often with citations. If you like a more conversational follow-up, Comet feels really natural. What's especially cool with Comet is that you get the liberty to choose. You can get both perplexity results and Google results just by entering your keywords on the top address bar. So it's up to you which search engine or AI experience you want side by side. Plus, you can directly change your default search engine in Comet to something like Google Search if you prefer. In Chrome, you're basically limited to Google Search. The option to switch to a search engine like perplexity isn't available at all. So Comet gives you extra flexibility when it comes to search. When it comes to AI models, Chrome gives you Gemini natively, which only works in certain regions or with certain features enabled. Comet, on the other hand, lets you pick from multiple large language models for different tasks. You can choose any model from GPT-5, Claude Sonnet 4.5, or even Gemini, which is a big advantage. For visual tools, both browsers have something cool to offer, but there are some real differences in how you use them. In Comet, you can take a screenshot of literally anything you see on a web page, just one click and it's saved. What makes it even better is you can then ask the AI any questions about that image directly inside Comet. For example, you could screenshot a chart, a photo, or even a chunk of code, and then ask Comet to summarize, explain, or analyze what you just grabbed. This back and forth makes it super handy for fast research or if you're curating notes as you browse. Chrome has a similar feature using Google Lens. All you need to do is click on the address bar and you'll see a lens icon. Just click on it, select any part of the web page, and Google will instantly pull up info about that image or section. It can identify objects, places, and even translate text, which is super useful. But there's a little catch. You don't get a direct option to ask follow-up questions right there. If you do want to dig deeper with questions, you have to switch to AI mode, which opens a new tab, and then you can ask anything you want about that image or result. One unique thing with Gemini and Chrome is that it can actually identify people's faces in images, which Comet can't do just yet. That makes Chrome a bit stronger for certain types of visual search, especially for photos and people-related content. That said, both the tools have their own strengths and unique charm. Personally, I found Comet's screenshot and instant Q&A flow really convenient. Everything stays compact and just a click away. If you like asking quick questions about visuals as you browse, Comet will probably be your favorite. Let's talk about workflow automation for a second, because this is honestly where Comet goes to the next level. Comet literally takes control over your browser. It understands what you want to do, creates an action plan, does the research, clicks buttons on your screen, and can even fill out forms for you, all without you lifting a finger. 
The possibilities for automation with Comet are honestly endless. Whether you want to organize information from all your open tabs, draft and send out emails, or even automate repetitive online tasks, Comet's AI can handle it directly inside the browser, no extra setup needed. I've already made a separate video showing 11 insane use cases for Comet's automation, which I'll link below. Definitely check that out after this video if you want to see these features in action. Now with Chrome, you can still do a lot, but for automation you're mostly relying on third-party extensions or doing things manually. Chrome is flexible, but when it comes to true hands-free, AI-driven workflow automation, Comet just feels way more powerful and seamless straight out of the box. It's honestly a major upgrade if you want your browser to work for you, not the other way around. Tab management is another area where the difference is clear. Comet uses an AI approach to help you group, summarize, or close tabs intelligently. You just ask, and it happens. In Chrome, tab grouping and workspaces are there, but it's more of a manual process. You drag and drop or create groups on your own. One more thing worth mentioning is the AI Voice Assistant feature in both these browsers. In Comet, you get a built-in AI Voice Assistant that lets you interact with the browser completely hands-free. You can ask questions, get summaries, and even control browser actions just by speaking. For example, you could say, tell me one latest tech news from today, and it would instantly fetch and read out the answer. Here are some of the latest tech news from today. Reuters reports that Brazil will begin construction on a TikTok data center in about six months, with significant investment. Also, Apple is facing a lawsuit over the use of copyrighted books to train its AI, and Samsung has been ordered to pay nearly $445.5 million over patent infringements. For more details, you can check out Reuters Tech News at Reuters.com technology. Would you like more info on any specific topic? Or you might command something like, open the video of Mark Rober MIT speech, and Comet not only finds the video for you, it actually opens it up and starts playing it automatically, no clicks required. It's super handy if you prefer talking instead of typing, especially when you're multitasking, researching, or working on content creation. Chrome also offers a voice search feature, and when you use it to ask something like, tell me one latest tech news from today, it quickly searches and reads out the top results for you, much like Comet does. But if you try a command like, open the video of Mark Rober MIT speech, Chrome will just search for the video and display the results rather than actually opening and playing the video automatically. Privacy is always a hot topic. Chrome is deeply tied to Google's overall data and advertising ecosystem. You do get a bunch of privacy controls, but it's no secret that a lot of data is still being collected in the background for ads and analytics. Comet's advanced automation relies on deep access to your browsing, email, and app data, which increases privacy and security risks. Comet tracks user activity for AI-driven ad targeting, similar to Chrome, but goes even further. Vulnerabilities can expose personal data, so if privacy is your top concern, Comet is less protective than Chrome. As for performance and pricing, Chrome has been around for ages, is super optimized, runs smoothly on almost any device, and is completely free. Comet is also pretty fast, while you can use most of the AI features for free, but most of its standout automation and advanced AI features are limited on the free plan. The good news for students is that you can get the full pro plan for free by verifying your student status. All right, to wrap things up, right now, Comet comes out ahead in most situations, mainly because it's built as a true AI agentic browser. The automation and smart features are much deeper and more integrated compared to Chrome, where AI is just starting to be woven into the experience. Chrome's AI integrations are still limited, but that could change fast. Google has already announced full Gemini integration inside Chrome, turning it into a complete AI agentic browser similar to Comet, and it's already live for users in the USA. So the days when Chrome and Comet are head-to-head, -head, or maybe even when Chrome leapfrogs Comet, aren't far off. Time will tell which one takes the crown as the best AI-powered browser. I'll definitely make a detailed, updated video as soon as Gemini rolls out globally in Chrome, so stay tuned for that. Until then, let me know your thoughts in the comments and check the description for all the helpful links I mentioned. If you want to watch the video on 11 insane use cases for comments automation, click on the video appearing on your screen.